Good morning, folks. We're going to get a test of Earth's magnetic field in the coming days. We just don't exactly know which test that will be. We'll go over that in top science news, starting at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on the sun with a number of things to be watching. Filaments, coronal holes, bright active regions. We're going to watch the last 48 hours in ionized helium here because it's been a heck of an uptick. Filament eruption top right. The big jerk the wheel CME we showed yesterday. Then the bright active region eats the plasma filament extending north from it. Filament goes off the south to the left and near the equator on the right, another filament lifted off this morning. We have also seen the sunspots make a bit of a comeback the last couple of days, but are still yet to produce significant flares. So we take a look at the solar wind and in purple, that rise is our entry into a weak coronal hole stream. Earth's magnetic field is handling that fine, but it's what's coming that will give us the test. And little spiral for yesterday's jerk the wheel CME shows it will be close to impacting. And NOAA's Enlil Spiral has the filaments that initially came off the south, they missed the northern eruption of a filament, and they have the ones from yesterday too. Folks, there's three or four CMEs that could offer an impact in the next three days, starting tonight. None is a direct shot, but I am eager to watch the solar wind and geomagnetic conditions progress over the coming days. Let's go to the articles, and first one is a minor nod at the side door of the global electric circuit. The energetic release that causes lightning in volcanoes, even without significant ash, is the same energy they've studied interacting with the global electric circuit, and that is what's triggering the change in nearby geomagnetic field character during the eruptions. Up next, we're back at space weather and health, but this time it's the first significant study on conception and preterm births with solar storms in about a decade. They've identified the latter stages of pregnancy as the more vulnerable to space weather-induced issues, and that comports with previous literature on the topic and basic common sense. This one is interesting because we constantly look for subharmonics of the major solar Heinrich Bond cycle, where the 6,000-year solar event triggers the Heinrich events on Earth. We know about the 3,000-year cycles on both the Sun and the Earth, and this one here is an excellent half-step of that. Since we've seen the length of day, Earth's rotation speed, also glitching with major solar storms, this one makes a great deal of sense. Much more so anyway than if they'd said 1300 or 1800 years, for example. Folks, this might not be the most prolific recurrent nova on record, even in its own galaxy. But this one has now gone off four times, or that's what they've seen. And it's so faint, they're almost absolutely certain they've missed some. They plan to do excess monitoring on this in the coming years so as to not miss the next one. But for now, it's another Nova repeater and another realization they have missed quite a bit in space. Now, last but not least, an excellent one-two punch here. First, we have yet another indication that solar storms take out ozone. This is well-known science, but it's good to push forward with it. It confirms ideas about past major solar storms and rapid short-lived climate events, but more importantly, it confirms this using three separate ground stations and then shows how the exact same period of satellite data for the region showed nothing for the ozone, only nitrous oxide. It's a brutal hit for the satellite confidence in measuring those values, especially since that's the area where space weather really begins to force the atmosphere of the Earth. It speaks to the super flare risk overall, the enhanced risk with Earth's weakening magnetic field leaving that ozone more exposed, and to the solar climate forcing in what their satellite data is missing. We greatly appreciate your support. Still waiting to hear back from Karen, JPL, or anyone at NASA after they hastily pulled the trigger in their initial response. You guys got any more emails from them? We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.